Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a curriculum review to share with you today. This is for all the materials that we use for our mineralogy main lesson block. So the first thing I wanna show you is the curriculum that we use. This is by Live Education and this is a Waldorf inspired curriculum. And we follow this as our main curriculum. And I did supplement the curriculum with other resources. Now, something that I had intended to do was actually all of the lessons, and it should have taken about three weeks, but we didn't get to all the lessons, and we kind of also diverted into some other materials as well. So let me show you those things and how we liked it. First of all, I really, really like the approach that the Waldorf Education takes with teaching all the subjects, and especially mineralogy, because last year we did a geology main lesson block, actually a unit study, and I didn't really like the way that we approached it, and I kind of wish that we had done it from the Waldorf perspective and used this curriculum. So this time around, I went ahead and uh, started out with the curriculum and really loved the opening lessons, and then we got a little distracted. I'm gonna explain why in a minute. But what I really like about it is that it starts with the two archetypal stones, rocks, and then it goes from there to explain the other phenomenons in nature and mineralogy and geology rather than starting with like the rock cycle or the different layers of the earth it starts with two rocks that one the igneous rock comes from fire and the other one limestone comes from water so you see these two opposing forces and then you continue from there and i just loved that opening so much let me show you the the main lesson book that we did and of course i've got this all of these beautiful samples here that I'm going to move in a minute, but this is what decorated our unit study bookcase, I guess you can call it. But let me show you the main lesson book that we made. We went ahead and did a lot of watercolors, and so I bound the book after we had the material done. Now, we weren't really careful this time around, and so I'm going to explain why it, the, this main lesson book doesn't look quite as tidy as our previous one on our ocean main lesson block. The first thing is that I went ahead and I did some watercolors along with my son. I did about four of them, and he probably did about ten. And since I only had four, I decided to go ahead and include them within his book just as Philip pages and also just because I didn't want to lose them once they were done. So this first page is actually one that I drew along with him and this was showing the the formation of limestone as well as the formation of igneous rock. So this is like one of our opening lessons. Then this is actually his title page. He wanted to do it on, you know, igneous rock and volcanoes. And then he did this one here, which is actually on the California coast. So I know it's kind of all over the place. It's not quite as tidy as I would have liked it. And then his first lesson, which actually I should have prefaced that, the first lesson before the two rocks, the ignis and the sedimentary, or, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the fire rock and the water rock. Let's call them those for a minute. Before we actually get into that, we do local geology and just what you can find in your in your backyard and in on you know even farther away than that and so for us it's the california coast and it's really how california was formed and since we had previously done this in our ocean main lesson block this was just a bit of a review and then we were able to kind of really bring those those ideas together we visited some local geological sites and got some really great tours and information about what was actually here, where we are standing today, you know, 10,000 years ago or 6 million years ago. And it was really fascinating. We absolutely loved it. All right, so this is where things kind of fall apart. We did not pay attention to what lessons should come next. So a lot of times my son did his his uh, watercolors on single-sided pages rather than us being aware of what the lesson would come after it and then do the watercolors on that page. So this volcanic uh, drawing watercolor really should have come on this page, but it didn't. So anyway, uh, then he has his narration on the one side and this is on limestone and there weren't wells like this back then, so that is incorrect, but 
<laughs> we drew it anyway. This was his attempt to do uh, coal. This is like the formation of coal. And we both weren't pleased with it. So he did it again. But the sad thing is that he had done it on the backside of the page that he already had his water scene for limestone. That happens sometimes. It's a bummer, but he went ahead and he redid it again. I'm a lot more pleased with the way that he did it. I, I really helped him with this. I kind of explained what I wanted in each section because I didn't watercolor a sample for him. And then he has how coal is formed and that continues on this page. And then we have another blank page. And then he has that drawing that sorry, watercolor that you can see here on the first page. So I watercolored this right alongside him and this was his watercolor of the same scene. So the water here and then the volcano here, just to kind of show just different geological formations and how these different rocks are formed. And then this is the one that I had drawn alongside with him for this drawing right here. And so I went ahead and I just had him include that in his his uh, main lesson book because he did not have as many watercolors as he had narrations, which is unusual. But towards the end of our unit, we we were just kind of getting through the lessons and not really finding time to do any drawing. So we have the force of water and then the water cycle and then we have ice here and he didn't even decorate the side of his narration. Usually we have some kind of a border not this time around. And then we have wind and I gave him my California picture of our California coast. And then, oops, my book is coming apart. And then this was my volcano that I just stuck at the back of his um, main lesson book. All right, so I bound this one on my own <laughs> using the cinch machine. I gotta come back in and fix that. You can see that it's kind of coming apart and that's just because I did not close these this coil like completely and then my daughter who is six did the front cover she does a lot of watercoloring and we just keep them all and I asked her if I could use this one as the front cover to the main lesson book she said yes but would not give us one for the back cover so there is no there's none on the back cover she had three other ones that I was asking her for and she said no but anyway I used my uh, scrapbook stickers in order to write the title for this rather than using my silhouette cameo to cut a title so let me put this aside and show you the projects that we really enjoyed. Uh, I also want to show you some of the samples. This is actually my mom. She let us borrow it for this for this unit. We also have this really neat fossil of a fish that my friend let me have. And then we have a variety of crystals and more crystals. And then this rock, which pretty sure it's marble from Marble Mountain, somewhere in California that we picked up a long time ago. So these are some of the things that we had on display that we could look at and just kind of have present, especially for the lessons that we were doing on this. But mostly it just adds classroom decoration and, a, an, and an invitation to study this you know, this lesson or these lessons. We also ordered these online and they actually ordered these during our ocean main lesson block. These are the ancient form of the Nautilus. I think it's called an ammonite. Uh, I think that's what they're called. I'll let you know in a minute. And um, we ordered them off of eBay. It took like almost two months to arrive. So it came at the tail end of our mineralogy unit or or sometime during our mineralogy, completely missed our whole ocean main uh, lesson block. But they're gorgeous and my son really, really likes it. So we ended up getting one for him, one for my daughter, and I think one for my other son and one for me. So anyway, uh, let me put these things aside and uh, grab some more things to show you. So I first wanna show you how we actually store our materials when we're working through our main lesson block. I have one of these uh, folders here and I put like a manila folder on the back and the whatever main lessons we're working on, the drawings, the watercolors, I put them inside the folder and then in the back we'll put all of the rough drafts. So my son wanted to keep these rough drafts, rough drafts, but also I'll just keep them back here so that they don't get lost while he's working on a unit, especially if he doesn't get a chance to put it into final draft uh, and we just don't want to lose any of the paper. So that's how I store and organize our unit while we are working on it. I also keep this right behind where we sit, where I sit in our homeschool room. And along with this material, we also have the books that we are using. So all of that's in an easily accessible place.
Some of the projects and hands-on materials we had for this unit are these geocentral rock samples. They're really nice, but I found that we only really went for the sedimentary rock and the igneous rocks this time. And they come in this really nice little container and they're all numbered so that you can identify them with the little booklet that comes with it as well as the magnifying glass. The only problem is that sometimes these stickers will come off and then you're kind of at a loss unless you already knew what they were. So I would just suggest taking a picture of it before you get into a box like this, especially if you have young children or really children that like to get their hands in things because those stickers will definitely fall off. So we have the sedimentary rocks and the metamorphic and the igneous and so we use this one a lot the most this time around all right we also had this little project that we actually got for our geology unit that we did last year and we never got to it and so we did it this year and basically it, co it comes in this little pouch like this and inside there's a bag that's filled with sand and then a variety of other treasures and it's really easy to sift through it's not like a a, a normal uh, excavation kit that would probably ma be made out of a material like this. this is another project that we did but it, it's not made out of plaster and so it we this project is done in like five minutes it's super fast but it's super exciting so these are the things that my son found actually this is only half of the stuff that was found because my daughter did this too and she found almost an equal amount well they did it together it's just that they divided up what they found at the end and they each got to choose the things that they wanted but you get a ton of really nice specimens so and and this is not very expensive it's definitely less than ten dollars but it's it's probably even way less than that and you get some really really nice samples and you get a really cool hands-on project to do as well so i really really like this one highly recommend this one and then you can also identify the things that you found. And what's really cool too is that you could DIY this one yourself really easily, especially if you already collect a lot of geological samples. You just go to like a hardware store, buy some sand or, you know, go to the beach. And then you could make your own like this. This would be a really great party gift too, or, you know, party favors. All right, so let me show you the other projects that we did. Now we've done this one before, and so I do not have a video on it, but we did two different geode kits. We did the giant geode, which actually I do have a video on this one. And then we also did the other geode kit, and we just displayed them in here. Look how gorgeous those samples are. I mean, just beautiful. And so last year we did this one for our geology unit. So this year we decided to try this giant one as well as do this one again. Now I'll tell you the giant geode I think was about $20 and this one had I think 15 premium geodes. It's important that you go for the premium kind. And this one was expensive, it was $50. But if you go for a premium geode kit that has less geodes, you can find it for a more affordable price. But definitely go for the premium kind. You'll be a lot more pleased with the samples you get. If you are considering doing the giant geode, I would say skip it and go for the smaller ones because they're just as thrilling, like the, the formations, because they're all about the same quality. It's just that this one is bigger, but honestly, the small ones were far, far more fun to do. So my, oh, my son who is 11, he broke this one open and then with the smaller ones, we all got a chance to do them. Plus, I really like the samples that came in here. There's there's this colored one that I just really, really like. And then, oh, look how gorgeous these are. Anyway, and so we love, love, love the kit that comes with a variety of them. They even come with these little stands, three stands, and then like the goggles. And it's just a really fantastic kit. We really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it. If you, you know, if you want to do the giant geode, go ahead and do it, but I would recommend skipping this one. The only other thing is that with the geode kit, the one that comes with all of these beautiful geodes, it also comes with pyrite, and we already broke a couple open last time, and this time we decide not to, and I think it came with three or four. I think one of those is from like a previous kit, and so that's the only thing that, you know, I'm not super interested in, and we just, you know, we didn't do anything with them. However, I have an idea for these. 
I'm gonna uh, take these and totally crush them up until they're like tiny little bits or you know kind of smaller bits and then we're going to use this for our own panning for gold and this would make a great project with like a group of kids again like party party project party project <laughs> like a party activity and then you could do your own panning for gold and you could you know use the pyrite as gold of course all right uh, let me put these things aside and grab a few more things so these two display boards have samples of the the rocks, the gems that we got from a previous excavation kit that we did with our geology unit. So we didn't do these ones again, but we went ahead and before the unit started towards the beginning of the year, I went ahead and displayed all of these. And I really like the way that it turned out. It makes it really beautiful and it really kind of makes these things that the kids got from those excavation kits really special. And I also went ahead and I labeled them with the labels that came in the box. And so I really like the way that these turned out. This one was from a rock excavation kit for igneous rocks. And then I kept the information in the back here so that my son could pop it open and you know remember the ones that he that he got and this one was shaped as a volcano which was really a nice little feature like the excavation kit itself was face uh <laughs> look like a volcano. Uh, I keep most of the pamphlets and little things that come with these different kits and projects so that if we decide to do them again in the future, I have that information here. So the one thing that we didn't do again was this volcano activity where you just mix the baking soda and the vinegar together. I have, we, we have the whole thing already assembled, but we just decided not to do it again this time. All we would need to do is actually just do the fun part although all of it's kind of fun even the decorating part but we skipped it this time and then there are the other activity guys that came with the other projects that we did something that i don't have handy to show you is actually this compost kit and you would think why would you compost which has to do with like organic matter when you're doing a mineralogy unit which is totally inorganic but this ended up being really really good for our mineralogy unit and it was actually done kind of by accident where i was storing this kit this uh compost kit was in the unit that I, I put all of our unit study material. So I'll display the things like, you know, the pretty things that I want to display or display a few books. And then I'll, I'll put all the kits and the projects that we want to do within this unit in our homeschool room. And this was a really large item that was taking up space and I really needed to move it in order to put the new stuff in. So I thought, well, why don't we just do it now? I had intended to do this in the spring, but we went ahead and we did it in the winter or, you know, late fall. And while we were doing, we compost anyway, but this was a fantastic kit and I have a video on this. So that's linked down below if you want to see it, but you get these three compartments. You can really see the decomposition process going on. And this one shows three different materials, two that would decompose, um, decompose, but one that wouldn't. What we did was we put all matter that could, we just put organic matter that could decompose decompose fairly quickly. And what we were able to see is organic matter like, you know, kitchen scraps in a variety of colors all turn the color of dirt, brown, a rich brown. And this was so helpful in understanding some of the lessons that we did on coal, which was part of our mineralogy unit, because the idea of taking something so global and trying to figure out like, how does it turn into something that's like black and rock-like, doing this project was actually a great accidental hands-on project that I will always consider doing when we do our mineralogy and geology units. So just wanted to say that that ended up being fantastic. All right, so let me put these older lessons, which I do have videos on both of these. And the and I would recommend looking at the entire geology playlist because it includes some of the projects that we did this time, but it also includes other projects that we didn't do, but we have that, that would complement a geology unit really well. So let me show you the projects that we actually did do. Let me pull out this other little display board here, or tray. This is actually a tray that I use, or I used to use them in my scrapbook, but I've actually taken them all out of my scrapbook room and I'm using them in our homeschool room now because I think they're a great way to display the different things that otherwise would get lost. It just makes it a really inviting, interactive, educational tool. So in here, we have this fossil collection kit and instead of keeping them in their little baggies, I went ahead and I displayed them 
all in these little compartments. I also added some of the things that we have found on our own uh, excavation or er, fossil digs. So uh, several years ago, we went to Utah and we went to the U Dig site in Utah to excavate these trilobites. And that was so much fun. I really, really want to go again. I mean, it was so many years ago that we only had half as many kids then as we do now. <laughs> That's telling you something. And then we also found these. I think the kit came with one of them, but I went ahead and I added some of the other ones. I think this is the one that came in that particular kit. And I think these are the ones that we found or vice versa. I don't remember, but we were at a dig site in Texas in Mineral Wells and it's open to the public. It's totally free and the fossils are really easy to find. And so we found these. So all of the United States used to be under a shallow sea. So there are a lot of the, well, depending on where you look, there are a lot of these kinds of, of, uh, of fossils. So that's something else that we just added to the, to this kit, things that we found. We also, this is, a. uh, uh petrified wood. You can see the beautiful crystal structure in there a little bit. This is from Calistoga, I believe, in Northern California, another place that we went to kind of recently. So we like to pick up little odds and ends like that. And it really, you know, we like them anyway, but then it really works well with our homeschool. And so having things like this collected and displayed is really exciting for the kids. Now, it is more exciting when I am putting it together. That's when it is at their peak interest. Once it's been out for a few days, they're not looking at it with the same enthusiasm as they are really when it's the preparation for the unit, which is kind of interesting, right? So while I'm preparing for the unit and I'm pulling out everything, there is this excitement and my my 11 year old is reading through the books and my six year old is looking through the things and looking through the picture books and I'm displaying these things and they're touching everything and looking at everything and asking questions and reading about them. And then when we get to this part in the lesson, they're like, oh yeah, we did that. Like, you know, we don't need to do that again. And so that, if you're experiencing that, just know that that's something that I experienced too. But, you know, I'm still going to do this kind of stuff. It's just that it doesn't have the same kind of peak interest the entire time that we're doing that unit. I want to show you things that we added to this that I'm not sure where they're going to end up. They might end up on a display board like this. We're not sure. There's this set right here and then there's this set right here. And this is from a dinosaur excavation kit. And when we first got it, I thought they were going to be like reproduction pieces, but these are actually real samples. So I thought that was really cool, especially for the price. I thought that was really awesome. I mean, you can dig a little bit further if you want and confirm that they are actually real samples. But uh, to the best of my knowledge, this dinosaur kit contains real authentic dinosaur samples. And so I've actually pronounced this aquatic reptile wrong in the video in which I showed you this kit, but that is the tooth from that aquatic reptile. And I thought that was really cool. And so this is some, like this kind of tooth is really easy to find. Just like shark, fossilized shark teeth are really easy to find because this aquatic reptile lost those teeth as, as often and as quickly as sharks did. So that's why that's going to be easy to find. This is a piece of a uh, dinosaur bone that's been cut and polished. So it's neat to look at that and compare that against a rock. And then this totally looks like a rock, but it's actually called, I think it's called coprolite, a coprolite. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but this is dinosaur dung. So that was kind of, and it's totally hard as a rock. So that was kind of neat. And this kit came with this little display thing and it was kind of cute, but I don't think we'll keep it or we'll I'll just recycle it. But it was kind of neat the way that, you know, you, you have it like this and then you can display your little findings here. I went ahead and kept it to show you guys, but I don't think my kids were as interested in, in keeping that. And we're going to figure out a way to display these uh, a little bit differently. Let me put these aside and show you the games that we really liked. So we had two different games for our opening activities and the, the Ibu cards, this is natural and earth science flashcards. These ones were okay. These, I, I, we have used these for multiple units now and they're just not as, as I'm going to say user friendly as some of the other activities that you could do for your warm up activity, activities or morning activities. So these are beautifully illustrated 
cards, flashcards, and then it has information on the back. And so because it covers so many wide, a, a wide variety of topics, we could only use maybe four or five or six cards for any one unit that we're doing. And what we would do is we would read the information without saying the word that it was, dolphin, for instance. And so my son would have a few cards and I would have a few cards and I would read the information. He would have to guess what I was talking about. And that worked great for a couple of opportunities, you know, for morning activities, but then very quickly, you know, you remember them and then it doesn't work. But this would be great. Like if you'd already done earth science as a, as a general topic and not just mineralogy or just, you know, um, like we use it with our ocean main lesson block, then what you could do is you could do the same thing that I explained, but you could do this any time of the year. In fact, after you've covered all of these, these different topics, you could use this the following year as a way to kind of refresh your memory. So not a terrible product, just not our favorite product. One of our favorite products though, however, this game by Professor Noggins, I'm sure you've seen it. If not here, then I'm sure you've seen it elsewhere, but these cards are trivia-based cards. They come with nice illustrations, although these ones, I feel like they've been misprinted because they really hurt my eyes when I try to look at them. They look like they've been, um, I don't know, not printed the same way that the other ones are. But basically, you get some nice illustrations on the back, and then you get trivia questions, or this is on the front, and this is on the back. And what's nice about this is that it's, if you're playing with your child, you could do the hard questions and your child could do the easy questions. There's also the dice that comes with it. You roll it and then you can figure out what question you're going to do. It's trivia based. So the only problem is that once you go through all the cards or all the questions rather, then you will just, you'll know the answers if you remember them. And so there is kind of an expiration on this game, at least for the unit that you're doing. And then eventually you can do it again in the future if you forget some of the answers. <laughs> I know, why are we homeschooling if we're always forgetting? But the point is, is that this is a really fun way to get the students into whatever main lesson you're going to do or what just to start the school day. It doesn't have to be a unit study approach or a Waldorf approach. What I really like about these games, number one, they really work. If if your kids are like, oh, I don't want to do school, you pull out a game, I guarantee you, I almost guarantee you, they're going to want to play and then that's going to be your in in order to transition to another activity. It worked every single time, especially with our ocean main lesson block, which required a lot more art and a lot more drawing. I'm sorry, a lot more writing. The, uh, this really helped excite my child to to start that part of our day. So you could use it in the morning, you could use it in the afternoon, you could use it to you know start the lesson, you could use it midway through the lesson. Really like these, they come in so many different topics, a lot of different subject areas. So I highly recommend this this uh, this game. So let me let me get to the to the books. Actually, hmm, I've got two more projects to show you. Let me show you this project first. This is called, pumpkin. this is called the Prehistoric Amber Kit. This is by Nature Watch. We really like the Nature Watch kits. Nature Watch kits are unique to Nature Watch. Nature Watch will, will sell a lot of other things. You can probably even find the Professor Noggins games on their site, but you won't find these classroom or individual kits anywhere else. Now we tend to buy the classroom kit so that we have materials left over if we do it again or to share with other homeschooling families. But what I really like about the company is that they also put together all of their kits into individual kits, then combine them together for homeschool families so that you you could buy them individually or you could buy them as a group, but the, it's a far better value when you buy the classroom kit. The classroom kit ends up being about a dollar to two dollars per student, but the individual kits will run you six dollars per student, but they will combine a bunch of those individual kits for the homeschool family, and then it's a lot cheaper. Now, some of the kits come with material that's going to be for the for the whole classroom, like one book or a variety of pine cones. But this one actually just comes with the material for the students. The only thing that's additional is the information and like, you know, the additional resources and background information about the kit. This kit was 
awesome. I highly recommend it. It was so much fun to do. Even my 15 year old participated, which means it's a win in my book. It comes with a bunch of samples of amber and then the, the tools in order to clean it up. So this is sandpaper. And then you polish up your amber and then it comes with like toothpaste to really polish it up and then like some denim to clean it up because this is intended for the classroom. And while it's really easy for you just to go to the sink and wash it off, it may not be as easy in a classroom setting to, to do that. So I really like that it takes into consideration all the things that a classroom is going to need in order to get these fantastic hands-on projects to the classroom. And then it even comes with little baggies to put your treasures in to take them home. I love details like that. And so you're not all of them come with little things inside. Like you're, you're not, you don't know what you're going to get. And while there may be plant life in here and leaves and other things, what, what is exciting is to find prehistoric bugs, right? And we did find one, which was so cool. My 15 year old sample actually had it. And I know that it's super hard to see, but it's right below that, that, thing there that almost looks like a drill. It almost looks like somebody drilled in there to try to extract some of the DNA from that mosquito so they could make dinosaurs, right? Oh, brilliant. Anyway, there was a bug in there, which was super cool. So if you were considering this unit or rather this product, uh, I highly recommend it. It'd be great for a classroom or, you know, in our case, we just do multiple ones. <laughs> All right, so I want to tell you about these books, but we're actually going to go through them super quick because a lot of them I reviewed already in our geology review. So I'm not going to go into detail about them as much for this one. But before we do that, I want to show you this kit here. This is also a classroom kit by Nature Watch, and this is called Rocco Rama. And this one comes packed with stuff. Not only does it come with the things that you need for your, oops, that one fell off, for your students. So it comes with one of each of these samples for all 25 students, but it also comes with the different minerals and mm, rocks in here, I can't remember, to do the mineral test the to see the hardness of the different minerals. And it also comes with some some books some really nice books the peterson guide and then like this geology pamphlet and so this kit actually came with a lot of additional materials for the whole entire classroom versus the the uh amber kit which just came with those materials so it came with a lot of stuff and we this is probably one kit that we didn't really need this many samples so I definitely share these with other homeschooling families or in the future, you just buy the individual kit for this one. But it came with a mineral, a, uh, well, a ton, a whole bag for the whole classroom, mineral, and then the three different types, excuse me, the three different types of rocks, so igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. And it came with these little cards and then you can put each of your samples down. And it came with a bunch of ideas on how to use this kit in the classroom. I have a video on how we, how we use this kit. It was a lot of fun and I, and then before we actually did this kit, I took samples from the the different rocks and then we did our own excavation kit so each one of these little blocks has two different rocks inside and then you just excavate them and then you can glue them onto your little thing so i thought that was an, a nice way to add a hand like a an additional hands-on project to this kit and i forgot to show you it also came with uh, samples of each of the different kinds of rocks, which is really nice. So this kit came with a ton of stuff. It was really fantastic, really packed, and and my children and I really enjoyed this one. All right, so let me put this aside and show you the project that the two projects that we did that I felt were kind of original to, uh, sort of original to my ideas. We made our own sedimentary rock using sand and plaster. And because I, you know, collected sand from all over the world, <laughs> you know, when people travel, I asked them to bring me back sand. <laughs> and so I had like Egypt sand and then like Australia sand and then local sand. And it's hard to see, but we did these different layers and I thought that was kind of cool. And then within it, we also put like little fossils and you can kind of see that there you can see, well, not fossils, I'm sorry, rocks and shells that would eventually turn into fossils, but they're not now, right? So there's a little bit of a 
of a shell peeking out there. It was actually harder to excavate than we expected. And one tip on that, if you are doing this for your kids and they're young and you think they're gonna struggle through the excavation part of the project, then I would recommend excavating it within a day after you make it because it's a lot easier, the material's a lot easier to go through since it still has a lot of moisture. The longer you wait, the drier it gets and the harder it gets. So you can spray it with water in order to make it a little bit easier. We made our own felted model of the planet and last time we did our geology unit, we did this using uh, molding beeswax and then you can cut it open. You can also do this with polymer clay and then you could cut it open and then bake it which is kind of cool. But we had previously done a wet felted a pumpkin and so I used the same idea to do the the wet felted model of the earth and so we went ahead and we did the outside of the earth we had a ball on the inside we did the outside I'll have a, a tutorial on this <laughs> you can go see that for directions on how to do it but then what's cool is you can open it up and you can see the different layers here and you know they're not accurate of course but it's you know an interpretation and then you can take out the inside of the earth and then you can find the hard core uh, around the outer core and the mantle, which is super cool. Well, I thought it was super cool. <laughs> my kids did too, but we're a little cheesy like that. And so then my daughter made hers, and even though she didn't felt hers as much as we did, you can see that it still turned out fantastic. And then my son did his here. And we just used whatever felt we or wool we had. And so this kind of a little bit on the fancier wool, but I think a, a more simple, cheaper wool would do just fine for this project. All right, so let me take you to the books. And gosh, I meant to do this first and we're literally, this is the last thing I wanna show you. Oh, except one more thing. <laughs> I just wanna show you that we also displayed some of our geodes, just some of the smaller ones. I thought it would re look really nice on one of these display boards. And so this was decorating our unit study table. And now we can go hang this up in the classroom. I wanna start with two books that we really liked. And that is the Geology and Astronomy book, which I ended up loving so, so much. This is the reason why we got derailed from our unit and it took on a whole different life of its own. This book is awesome. This has two units in it, Geology and Astronomy. The Geology one has 14 uh, lessons and the chapters are really short and so they're, they're very easy to get through, not too much information, it's narrative, it's, it's written beautifully. This is from a Waldorf teacher who lived in Edinburgh many years ago. He's since passed away but his notes were collected and turned into this book. Now something that is super cool about this is that uh, it had a section here on the story of Arthur's Seat. And this is a geological formation in Scotland. And over winter break, we were able to go to Europe and Scotland was one of our destinations and Edinburgh was one of our specific destinations. And you can bet that we went to Arthur's Seat and uh, <laughs> we brought back some samples. So this is probably not the igneous rock. I'm thinking this is a sedimentary rock that's over Arthur's seat, if I'm not mistaken on the geology, but don't quote me on that. And so it was super, super cool. I think cooler for me than the kids, <laughs> but still it was super neat to go to this place that we had read about. Now this is not typical. Like when you are studying geology and mineralogy, especially from the Waldorf perspective, you're not gonna have a lesson on Arthur's seat. You're going to have a lesson on whatever geology is local to you. But the decision was made when this book was being printed to leave the notes as accurate as possible because this is how this teacher taught his students who lived in Edinburgh in Scotland and not in Southern California. And so my, my geology lessons also included local geology. So we went to local places to learn about what was going on. So some of the places that are local to us that have really cool geology are the La Brea Tar Pit. So if you are ever in LA, I'd recommend that you go there. That's a really, really unique geological site that you're not going to find in an urban setting anywhere else in the world. And so that was really cool to go to. And then a couple other local things about how the uh, mountains along the coast are formed and 
you know, just stuff like that. And so that's what you should do when you're doing your geology. And, and there's interesting geology no matter where you are on this planet. All right, so we did this. We did a, approximately a chapter a day. At least that was the idea. Love this book. Highly recommend it. We happen to be doing our astronomy unit right now, and we have already done about 15 chapters of the astronomy part, and we I love it so much. And so we, I went ahead and I got, actually, I got it before I even read it, some of the other books in the series. And so I'm, if they're as good as this one, then I'm going to be very pleased with the rest of them. And I think that you will be too. You wouldn't want to be a mammoth hunter. We, we got, you're like, how does that relate to the fossils? But it kind of does because when we went to the La Brea Tar Pits, that has to do with basically the bones are from like the ice age approximately. And so this book also talks about the ice age. And so, and we love the You Wouldn't Want to Be books. They're like really kind of silly drawings, great information, really easy to understand, great content, really love them. One thing that we didn't get to that I really intended to get to was this book on the Grand Canyon, but we're just going to hold on to it. <laughs> Hopefully we get to it at some point. These three books we really like. These are fantastic books and I had wanted to go through all three of them and we didn't. We didn't even go through the one that I had, uh, you know, originally done for our geology unit. Uh, exactly. We went through it a little bit, but this book is fantastic. The information is just enough. But the best part is that it's filled with these projects that are really easy to do. And if you go through the geology playlist, that's linked down below and as well as at the end of this video, you're going to see a lot of the projects that we did in this book. I've got tutorials on how to do them. And then the one that we did this year with the sedimentary rock like this, this that was also from this book. And I had wanted to go through rivers and oceans and do some of the other projects in the book as well and weather and climate and we didn't do any of them at all but these are fantastic books i highly recommend them they're just they're just really great uh eyewitness books i've kind of moved away from the eyewitness books with the exception of the eyewitness explorers i feel like they are a um, they're a little better. Maybe they're easier to read. Maybe they're not as all over the place. They also include some hands-on projects, so I really like them. There are a couple of the eyewitness books that I, I did keep. I actually gave the majority of them away to another homeschooling family. Actually, she's right here on YouTube. It's, Eth it's Ethnic Green Living. Christy over at Ethnic Green Living. Uh, her channel's linked down below. You can go check her out. I sent her all of my eyewitness books because we just were not using them and they just needed to find a good home where they could be loved and used. The reason why we stopped using them is because I found that the information is, it's, it doesn't read as like a, a narrative, of course. What's good is that you can go anywhere in the book and get information and you don't have to read it from cover to cover. But then on, on the, you know, the flip side is that y there isn't a, a, something that's taking you through the entire book to keep you captivate. I felt like it was just pockets of information that we would learn and forget right away. I did keep the one on crystals and gems and rocks and minerals and a couple other ones. I kept the ones on the ocean and trees and plants because I knew that we would be able to use them if for nothing else, at least to use for drawing inspiration. So we did keep these two. We do like them, but they're not like top choice. All right. So for the rest of these books, these are all basically nonfiction books. I actually liked this one. It's, um, it's a little bit older, but I liked it. All the rest, oh, and this one's actually kind of nice too, but I never really totally got into it, but it's also kind of nice. Okay, the rest of these, they're all nonfiction books. You can pick them up from the library. There is nothing exciting about these books. I really didn't care for them that much. Actually, this one we used. I'm all over the place. This one we actually used. Uh, this one, eh, not so much. Although, look at that. At the back of the book, you can get inspiration to study individual uh, scientists and that would be a really good thing if you went out and got a couple of books on just a couple of scientists who study geology or mineralogy I think that would be really a great way to do the unit through you know the scientist himself or herself female scientist as well uh, book on volcanoes these are all just like you know, eh, you know, they're, um, I shouldn't say eh. They're just basic. They're just nonfiction. Of course, your unit has to have some nonfiction, but I wish they were a bit more 
uh, captivating maybe, or I don't know. I just, I feel like we read them and we forget. And I, and I hate wasting the time to read something that you're just going to forget afterwards. So uh, maybe my kid remembers more than I do though, because he seems to have remembered a lot of the stuff from the last unit that we did, even though I felt like the last unit on geology was kind of sort of a failure in the sense that I, I did not, I wasn't really pleased with the end result. And I felt like by the end of it that we, I just, I felt like we hadn't really learned anything, but I guess he did. Uh, caves, he, he, he enjoyed this book. This book is a lot of fun. We've been to a few caves that have the stalactites and the stalagmites and they are incredible. Arizona and Texas especially have some really nice one, nice ones. And if you're in Arizona, there's Karchner Caverns, which is now state, it's like a, a, a national, what are they called? National state and state national parks. Goodness, my brain today. So it is really well preserved. Karchner Caverns. If you get a chance to go out into the really in the middle of, of Arizona. It is a fabulous place. It's gorgeous. It is beautiful. Uh, you know, I highly recommend it. And it's a living cave, so it's still growing. So they're very particular. You can't take bags, no flash photography. They wash it down every day. You can't touch anything. You're far. You can't even get close to touch anything. It's amazing. And then this book on minerals, which is also a non-fiction book. All right, so I think I showed you everything. If I missed anything, check the description box below. I might have missed something. I'm not sure. You might get some more information down there, as well as all the links to the videos and playlists and channels that I mentioned during this video. If you end up doing this unit or something similar, I would love to hear how you like it and what resources you you used. And if you want to see the complete playlist for our mineralogy and geology units, I have left them on the screen. And of course, like always, you can see what we're up to on a daily basis by visiting me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.